Hello everyone, happy afternoon, a very good afternoon. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. A uh, quick nod whether the audiovisual is all good. Yes. Hello everyone. Happy afternoon. A very good afternoon. Welcome to today's YouTube live class, which is NF100. That is NEET PG and FMD Top 100 Topics. We are on episode 64. And our today's topic of discussion is acid-based disorders. An extremely, extremely important topic for all the exams, be it NEET PG, be it FMG. This is absolutely important. Many of you might have attended the, the mnemonics class with me for acid-based disorders. And, but this is going to be very, very important for those, uh, you know, who have not attended before and it could be a revision for those who have attended before. All right. And uh, so because of the request that I was getting for this topic to be covered, that's the reason we are doing that. Second, in the timetable, the 10 days timetable that we have made, we are following on the Telegram group. You have medicine and dermatology to be completed today. So I thought, let me help you in your daily target by just revising this topic very quickly. So uh, what's the plan for the rest of the day? Let me tell you there are two more classes today, 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. The mnemonics crash course, there are two courses going on, 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. I'll be meeting you again at 5 and 10 as well. All right. And before I forget, let me tell you about the Unacademy Learning Festival that we have. Right. So in this Unacademy Learning Festival, you have this amazing offer of one month subscription for just $2.99. I think that's super awesome and something that you should not be missing on. And you will get access to the mnemonics crash course which I'm taking. You get access to the other volatile topics course that's going on. All the previous courses that we have taken on the platform before. Uh, you can make your any subject which is weak. You can make strong by watching the sessions. Okay. So uh, Please make sure that you are making the best of it. I can see that majority of you have taken benefit of this offer. But if you know any of your friends who have not taken benefit of this yet, please let them know as well. Uh, you can use the code Dr. Nikita. Uh, you know, while you are subscribing, the code is Dr. Nikita to avail this offer. All right. The next one. Now, these are the various courses that are ongoing on the platform that I'm taking. One is the mnemonics crash course. Second mnemonics crash course. 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Combined together, both of these courses, it's basically your 20 lessons here, 20 sessions that we are having, right? We have started from 2nd of May. And also there's a course on radiology through MCQs that is going on. And that is the morning 8 a.m. We are done with two classes. We have two more coming up tomorrow and day after. So basically we have the plus classes at 8 a.m. 5 p.m. and also at 10 p.m. Okay, these are the three classes that we have. Apart from that, you have uh, an academy light subscription, which is only test series. And you have the upcoming mock test on 14th of May on the platform. We have for FMG students also, let me tell you, there's a high yield revision and MCQ batch which is coming up. It's a one month course complete. All 19 subjects would be covered. It's like the best that you can do in the last one month. And also, especially for FMG students, I'll be la launching a mnemonics crash course where we will be having five sessions. So for FMG students also, there's going to be a separate mnemonics crash course. The FMG students should also be attending the ongoing mnemonics crash course. After 70, we will have one more crash course, especially for FMG students, right? Then uh, we are also launching the UPSC CMS batch. Okay, the UPSC CMS uh, batch that's going to start from May 23 after your NEET PG exam. All the major subjects will be covered that are asked in UPSC CMS. We have NEET PG practice lead, the various tests that we have. The question bank has been updated, including the FMG previous year questions are there on the platform. Plus, you would be seeing the DPPs, the daily practice papers that we are uploading, you might have seen today, I shared a test that 
you can give it's for the plus subscribers only all right so let's start with the discussion here tell me what do you think would be answer to this one the primary change in metabolic acidosis is which of the following Right. The first ever thing that I want each one of you to learn here and to remember is your mnemonic in acid-base disorders that is Rome. Okay. This is a very, very important mnemonic which will help you to solve a majority of the questions. The mnemonic is Rome. What does it stand for? That respiratory R for respiratory O is opposite and the metabolic is equal. Okay. Metabolic is equal. So basically the changes in respiratory acid base disorders are opposite. The changes in metabolic are equal. What does that mean? What changes? So you're going to have a look at the change in pH, the change in bicarbonate and the change in PCO2. Now remember one thing that the change in your bicarbonate and PCO2, it goes in the same direction. We are talking in your compensated disorders right this is about the compensated disorders so the change goes in the same direction so for example if i tell you that in an acid base disorder the bicarbonate is decreasing what will happen to the pco2 the pco2 will also decrease as a compensation so basically remember if this increases this also increases if this decreases this also decreases so basically ye jo hai aapke pco2 and bicarbonate ye dono bhai ban aur ye jata hai saath mein both increase and both decrease together now it's a change in the ph that we need to correlate this with now ph basically when there is acidosis the ph will decrease when there is alkalosis the pH will increase, right? Acidosis means decreased pH, alkalosis means increased pH, okay? So, when you have respiratory acidosis, okay? Uh, okay. So, when you have respiratory acidosis, okay, when there will be respiratory acidosis, the first thing is look at the acidosis or alkalosis, the pH will decrease, okay, the pH will decrease. It is respiratory, what will happen to the bicarbonate and the PCO2, what will happen to bicarbonate and PCO2? Respiratory, Rome, respiratory is opposite changes. So the change in bicarbonate and PCO2 will be opposite of pH, the bicarbonate and PCO2 will increase, okay, the bicarbonate and PCO2 will increase. If it is your metabolic acidosis, okay, if it is metabolic acidosis, in that case, the pH will decrease because it is acidosis. What happens to bicarbonate and PCO2? They both go together. Metabolic is equal. Equal means everything goes in the same direction. So basically, remember in your metabolic disorders, it is all decrease or all increase. We are talking about after the compensation okay after the compensation right so look at this one the primary change in metabolic acidosis so your respiratory acidosis metabolic acidosis in respiratory disorders as the term says respiratory means the problem is in the lungs basically it's the problem with the ventilation respiratory means lungs wala problem lungs wala problem matlab PCO2 change is the primary change. For metabolic disorders, basically it is your non-lungs wala, kidney wala, that is your bicarbonate. Okay, the change in bicarbonate is the primary change. So what is the question that we had? The primary change in metabolic acidosis. First of all, acidosis means pH decreases. It is metabolic, all equal. Even your bicarbonate PCO2 will decrease. Because it's a metabolic disorder, metabolic is your bicarbonate primary. So, the primary change is going to be decrease in bicarbonate. Okay, that's why the answer is going to be C. Because metabolic disorders, primary change is in bicarbonate. All right. Is this clear with everyone? Let's go to the next question now. Okay. 
Okay, answer this question. What is the compensatory change in respiratory acidosis based on what we have learned? Okay, so I think there's some confusion between D and A is what I can see in the options. Let's see here. What is the what is the question saying? The question is saying what is the compensatory change in respiratory acidosis? Okay, what is the compensatory change in respiratory acidosis? First one, this is acidosis. The pH is decreasing, right? It's a respiratory disorder. The primary change would be the change in CO2, PCO2. Compensatory change would be the change in bicarbonate, right? So the question is asking about compensatory. So it's going to be the change in bicarbonate. It's not your PCO2. So option B ruled out, option D ruled out, right? Now it is asking about compensatory change. In respiratory, it is opposite. If the pH is decreasing, your bicarbonate increases, PCO2 increases, right? So it is the increase in bicarbonate. Is this clear with everyone? Right, so respiratory opposite, pH is decreasing. Primary change would be increase in PCO2. Compensatory change would be increase in bicarbonate. Okay, next one, some more practice. Tell me what will be the answer to this. Primary change in metabolic alkalosis is which of the following? Absolutely right. So now all of you have got this right. See, it is metabolic. The primary in metabolic is going to be bicarbonate, not the PCO2. So PCO2 is gone. Alkalosis means increase in pH. Metabolic, it's all increase, all decrease. So the bicarbonate will also increase. So it's your increase in bicarbonate. Okay, it's your increase in bicarbonate. Very good. Going to the next one, an important table here. So what do we see in this table? What is the normal range and what is the alteration in your acid-base disorders? So remember that for the normal values, it is all your four containing values. All the normal values is four containing. pH is 7.4. Bicarbonate, it is bicarbonate. Bi is 2 and 4, 24. PCO2 is your 40. So remember all the four containing 7.4, 24 and 40. Metabolic acidosis, pH acidosis, pH decreases. Metabolic is equal, everything will decrease, right? Metabolic alkalosis, pH increases. Metabolic equal, everything increases. Respiratory acidosis, pH decreases. Respiratory is opposite. The rest of the two, they go together. Opposite, both will increase. Respiratory alkalosis, pH increases. Alkalosis Respiratory opposite, the rest of the two will decrease. Give me a quick thumbs up if this is clear with everyone. Right, so this is what the table is and this is where it is, you know, uh, this is the table which is given with the values. Very, very important. A quick thumbs up so that everyone is clear with this. Right, okay. Now let's go to the next one. Let's try and complete this table which is uh, what is the change that you see metabolic acidosis then you have your uh, h plus bicarbonate respiratory compensation or you have the renal compensation all right so look at this one okay look at this one metabolic acidosis okay metabolic acidosis it is talking about h plus this is not ph so please note that point when the ph decreases the h plus increases right this is metabolic primary change would be your bicarbonate. It's going to be decrease. In acidosis, the pH decreases. So all decreases. PCO2 is going to decrease. Right. 
in metabolic disorders we have respiratory compensation in respiratory disorders we have metabolic compensation so you want to decrease the pco2 respiratory compensation so what do we see in metabolic acidosis to decrease the co2 basically the co2 has to go out of the body how will the co2 go out by hyperventilation more co2 wash out and that is why the compensation is hyperventilation right that's the reason like in your diabetic ketoacidosis which is metabolic acidosis we see Kussmaul's breathing which is hyperventilation okay metabolic alkalosis h plus decreases that means the ph increases this is the primary change increase in bicarbonate increase in pco2 is compensatory change the increase in pco2 is by hypoventilation right hypoventilation that means more co2 retention respiratory acidosis the ph is going to decrease the rest of them will be opposite primary is your pco2 now understand this concept of how does the kidneys compensate for your respiratory disorders when it is respiratory acidosis so already there's a lot of acid in the body we don't want more acid so what does the kidney do there's already acid so we increase the acid secretion what's the acid h plus so the h plus secretion excretion increases bicarbonate is an alkali to neutralize the acid in the body we need alkali so the bicarbonate reabsorption will increase okay that is increased bicarbonate reabsorption there is increased h plus excretion okay now next one respiratory alkalosis okay respiratory alkalosis the ph increases the rest of the two decrease renal compensation is also by the two decreasing h plus excretion by carbonate reabsorption decreasing basically this renal compensation is equivalent to your change in your bicarbonate basically okay the reabsorption and the h plus so let's try solving a question on this let's see if we have a question uh yeah we we'll have the questions let me see where did the questions go this is about compensation. This is about compensation. I'll come to that. Okay. Tell me which of the following is the cause of metabolic alkalosis? Which of the following is the cause of metabolic alkalosis? Yes, let me see how many of you get this right. Okay, Dr. Ahmed says A, uh, Hardik says E, E, D and F. Where do I see the confusion? Who has got it right? Yes, Hardik and Aruna, Vinita, uh, Kartika, you are correct. This is the answer here is hyperaldosteronism. I always, 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 always want you to remember this concept that is whenever, okay, what is the concept that I want you to remember? The concept is that whenever there is hyperaldosteronism okay whenever the aldosterone increases remember aldosterone al is al it causes alkalosis okay it causes alkalosis very very important and when there is alkalosis remember it is all k loss all k loss means the potassium generally decreases not 100 percent true but remember generally alkalosis is associated with hypokalemia okay it is associated with hypokalemia so please remember this and write it down it should be like on the tip of your tongue aldosterone causes alkalosis alkalosis is all k loss that is your decreased potassium so that's why the answer in the previous question alkalosis is aldosterone okay alkalosis is aldosterone look at the other options diarrhea what happens in diarrhea and what happens in vomiting now diarrhea and vomiting so basically in vomiting it is a stomach acid which is going out so there is acid which is going out so what remains in the body is alkali so there is alkalosis okay vomiting causes alkalosis diarrhea may it's your intestinal bicarbonate the alkali going out so what does it cause is acidosis 
you can also remember as diarrhea basically is your d that causes acidosis okay diarrhea causes acidosis what kind of acidosis metabolic it's not your lung disorder metabolic acidosis with high anion gap or normal anion gap with high anion gap or normal anion gap remember this is your normal anion gap metabolic acidosis it's a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis what are the causes of normal anion gap metabolic acidosis basically remember diarrhea okay diarrhea is a cause be it your git wala diarrhea or be it your renal wala diarrhea they cause your normal anion gap metabolic acidosis that is nagma git diarrhea what is renal diarrhea renal diarrhea is basically your renal tubular acidosis okay that's your renal tubular acidosis how do we differentiate whether this is your normal anion gap due to gi cause or a renal cause by looking at the urinary anion gap okay by checking the urinary anion gap if the urinary anion gap is positive that is your renal cause if it is negative that is your gi cause remember urine and renal right the urine is formed in the kidney they go together so urine wala is positive in your renal tubular acidosis okay it is in your renal tubular acidosis okay next option here chronic renal failure that is your acidosis h plus not going out ethylene glycol ingestion can you tell me the very very important point in ethylene glycol ingestion what are the clues in the question for ethylene glycol there will be the history of antifreeze ingestion antifreeze and there will be oxaluria hyperoxaluria oxalic acid going into the urine okay so oxalic acid it is right it's oxalic acid wala this is ethylene glycol is acidosis acetazole amide remember acid is your acid it causes your acidosis what acidosis remember acetazole amide it causes your renal tubular acidosis type what type of renal tubular acidosis that is rta type 2 remember acetazole amide ka brand name is dimox so di is your 2 okay that's your rta type 2 next one salicylate poisoning salicylate is your salicylic acid okay remember it's your salicylic acid so the patient is taking acid so it causes acidosis metabolic acidosis so remember salicylates cause metabolic acidosis but along with that they cause respiratory alkalosis it causes metabolic acidosis and respiratory alkalosis why because it stimulates your respiratory center so it causes your hyperventilation hyperventilation co2 going down so the ph goes up right respiratory is opposite so it is your respiratory alkalosis okay it's your respiratory alkalosis so i hope this is clear with everyone that hyperaldosteronism is your metabolic alkalosis aldosterone is alkalosis okay next question here let's have a look at the next question okay choose the incorrect statement about the anion gap let me see how many of you get this right absolutely right see always use this trick it helps you many times that when you are pretty pretty sure about that this is the answer i know that this is incorrect or this is correct then do not think about the other options now all of us know that anion gap in ketoacidosis is increased your diabetic ketoacidosis is your high anion gap metabolic acidosis so that is for sure the incorrect statement so automatically the rest of them are correct even if you know or you don't know but we know that ketoacidosis is high anion gap 
So first tell me that how do we calculate the anion gap? We are talking about your plasma anion gap. Anion gap is basically the gap due to anions. Which anions? The unmeasured anions. Which are the unmeasured anions? Basically your organic acids, phosphate, vagera, these are unmeasured. So how do we calculate is your cation that is sodium minus the anion. Which are the major anions that are measured? It's your chloride and bicarbonate. Okay, chloride and bicarbonate. Sometimes you would see that along with sodium, we add potassium also in the formula. What is the normal anion gap taken as? Normal anion gap is taken as 8 to 12. So more than that is your high anion gap. So whenever you have organic acids, that's going to be your high anion gap. Okay, that is going to be your high anion gap. So let's go back to the question. Lactic acidosis, lactic acid, organic acid, anion gap is increased. Anion gap is decreased in hypercalcemia. It is decreased in lithium toxicity. So, whenever we have the cations like calcium and lithium, which are unmeasured, when your unmeasured cations increase, your anion gap decreases. Okay, your anion gap decreases. So, calcium and lithium. Remember, is your decreased anion gap. Okay, it's your decreased anion gap. All right. Okay, let's go to the next one now. This is something that I want each one of you to get right. Which of the following lab results indicates compensated metabolic alkalosis? Everybody should get this right. Absolutely right. It's talking about your compensated metabolic alkalosis. That is the first mnemonic that we saw. Rho metabolic is equal. Everything goes in the same direction in metabolic disorders. It is alkalosis. So the pH increases. This is metabolic. So the rest of them will also increase. So all high. High PCO2, high bicarbonate, high pH. So basically that is what I would be searching for in the options in which options everything is increased that is your metabolic alkalosis okay next one what do you think is this statement uh, you know the answer to this which set of apt values describes a heavy smoker with emphysema chronic bronchitis who is becoming increasingly somnolent In such questions, ruling out is the major, major cheat code, the trick that you should be using. You think it's a D? I, I think I'm seeing answer to the right one. Why everybody has marked D as the answer? Something incorrect here? See, first of all, it's a heavy smoker with bronchitis, emphysema and somnolent. When there is emphysema, bronchitis, it's your obstructive disorder, right? It's your obstructive disorder, CO2 retention is happening. So tell me what is the acid-base disorder that we are thinking of? It's a CO2 retention. So how will be the CO2, right? How will be the CO2? There will be increased CO2, obviously, because CO2 retention. Is. When there is increased CO2, this is respiratory acidosis, pH is decreasing. Your bicarbonate goes in the same direction, right? So both of them will increase. First point is pH is decreasing. So which options are ruled out? 7.6, 7.5, 7.4, because this is alkalosis, this is normal. So either the answer is D or the answer is E, right? So, whether it is D or it is E, normal bicarbonate 24, normal PCO2 40. So, the values more than that. Ye 40 se zada hai, ye 40 se kam hai. Ye 24 se zada hai, 24 se kam. So, yes, the answer is going to be D. Right? The answer is going to be D. So, you guys were absolutely right. And when I started saying that, 
ki is there something wrong so some people did start changing the answers right so remember that the answer here is d it is respiratory acidosis next one a student who's nervous for a big exam and breathing rapidly what would you expect breathing rapidly is the major major important clue it's a problem with the breathing so the answer has to be respiratory disorder it is not your metabolic disorder for sure whether it's respiratory acidosis or alkalosis hyperventilation co2 out co2 decreasing right co2 out co2 decreasing respiratory is opposite ph will increase it will be respiratory alkalosis okay it will be respiratory alkalosis all right next one which set of arterial blood values describes a patient with a five day history of vomiting What is the answer to this? It's a five-day history of vomiting. Okay, Chaitanya, this is metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis. See, first of all, it's your vomiting. Vomiting means metabolic or respiratory. It's your metabolic disorder. It's not your respiratory. What does metabolic mean? All equal, all increase or all decrease. It is vomiting. In vomiting, the acid is going out. So what will be the disorder? It will be metabolic alkalosis. Alkalosis pH increases or decreases? The pH increases. So everything will be high. These options are ruled out where the pH is low. Either A or B. Where is everything high? This is where everything is high. So the answer is A. Okay, the correct answer is going to be A. Alright. Next one. Now these are the type of questions that come in your exam. All those which we are discussing. There were four to five questions in NEET PG-21 on acid-based disorders. So this is like extremely, extremely important. 45-year-old woman develops severe diarrhea and she has the following values. What is the correct diagnosis? Right. See. pH given is 7.2 less than 7.4 pH is decreased pCO2 is 24 normal is 40 pCO2 is decreased bicarbonate given is 10 normal is 24 it is decreased so basically it is all decreased all in the same direction so this is your metabolic disorder it is all decreased so this is your metabolic acidosis right so this is your metabolic acidosis Normal anion gap, that is what we see with diarrhea. Anyways, we said that diarrhea is your acidosis, right? But do not, you know, always check this because there might be a, you know, a contradiction between the two. Okay, let's solve this one. Person was admitted in a coma. Analysis shows the following values. What is the underlying acid-base disorder? That's what I said, Arjun. Don't uh, go by that temptation. Always better to check the values. Right. See, in this acid-based disorder, whenever you are asked, the values are given, whether what disorder is this. The first thing to check is pH. pH is 7.1, less. So it is acidosis. So your alkalosis, while well, the option is out, right? If the alkalosis is out. Next is whether it is respiratory or metabolic. Look at the other values. PCO2 16 decreased. Bicarbonate 5 decreased. pH decreased. All decreased. All in the same direction. So this is your metabolic acidosis. Okay. This is your metabolic acidosis. Right. Next. What is this disorder here?
what do you think is this disorder here absolutely right see first thing ph 7.5 increase alkalosis so acidosis is out acidosis is out metabolic or respiratory look at pco2 52 more than 40 bicarbonate 40 more than 24 it is increased so basically it's all increased so this is your metabolic alkalosis in respiratory the changes go opposite okay thank you so much for gulab jamun i think we deserve a gulab jamun for simplifying this topic and i do wish and hope that you get questions on this in your exam because such questions are extremely extremely you know scoring you should not be losing your marks on such questions and getting like five questions in one exam on such topic it's like uh, you know a cherry on the cake all right next one let's try solving this Okay, Avinanda, I'll try to do the next NF100 episode on basically your null hypothesis, Vara. Chandan, thoda thoda mein pura pura clear hona chahiye with the questions. Right, let's try solving this question. You have a patient who has following pH is 7.5, PCO2 20, bicarbonate 16. pH 7.5 increase, so that means this is alkalosis. PCO2 20 decreased, bicarbonate decreased, the changes are opposite. So, this is respiratory alkalosis. The question is, which of the following is correct? He is hypoventilating. When anybody is hypoventilating, the CO2 does not go out. So, the CO2 increases. There is going to be your increased CO2. But here the patient has decreased CO2. So, this is incorrect. He has decreased ionized calcium in the blood. Is it correct or incorrect? Correct or incorrect? See, so this is very, very important. In your alkalosis, okay, in your alkalosis disorders, remember there will be decrease in the calcium. Why will there be a decrease in the calcium? Because in alkalosis, What's happening in your alkalosis? The albumin binds to your calcium because hydrogen is busy compensating for your alkalosis disorder. Hydrogen is not available for albumin which is negatively charged. There is positive uh, cation which binds. Hydrogen is not available. So basically you will have, okay, hydrogen is not available, calcium will bind. So, the, and now the ionized calcium, the free calcium decreases. So, remember that alkalosis basically has decreased the calcium and that is why this decreased the calcium can present with features like titani, very, very important, okay? So, that is why calcium decreases in hyperventilation because there is alkalosis, right? The same concept there, okay? So, he has almost complete respiratory compensation. This is already your respiratory disorder. The compensation will be renal compensation, not respiratory compensation. So, this is outright incorrect, right? And he has an acid-based disorder caused by overproduction of fixed acid. No, this is not acidosis. Acid ka production zada nahi hai. Ye alkalosis hai. So, ye acidosis nahi hai. Appropriate renal compensation would cause his arterial bicarbonate to increase. Now look at the E option. When the arterial bicarbonate increases, bicarbonate increasing means alkali increasing. Already it is alkalosis. Do we want more alkali? No. So this statement is also incorrect. Okay, so the rest of them are incorrect. The correct is in alkalosis, calcium decreases. So remember that is your titani. Okay, that's your titani like features can come. Next one. What do you think would be this?
female, 45 year old female with renal failure missed the dialysis. So basically, this is your chronic renal failure. And, and we know there is acidosis. Okay, there is acidosis in chronic renal failure. So this is metabolic acidosis. Okay, metabolic acidosis. Easy one. Next. What would be this? 80 year old man had a bad cold two weeks ke baad. He said it went into my chest. There's a tightness and I am unable to breathe. Unable to breathe means there is hypoventilation. Right? Unable to breathe means there is hypoventilation. Hypoventilation means increased CO2. That means opposite decrease the pH. That is your acidosis. So this is going to be respiratory acidosis right amazing okay what is this one a similar type of question in your need pg21 female insulin dependent diabetes ph 7.2 bicarbonate 17 pco 220 what is this absolutely right pH is 7.2, this is decreased, acidosis, alkalosis is out, alkalosis is out. Bicarbonate 17 decreased, PCO2 20 decreased, all decreased, this is metabolic, respiratory is out, right? This is your metabolic acidosis, which is given here, okay? This is your metabolic acidosis. Next one, now let's see this one. I want all of you to get this question right now. Causes of metabolic alkalosis include all of the following except. Uh, Chaitanya, you know, ideally, as far as I've seen in the recent papers, compensation, the calculation is not asked. But I'll tell you at least how do you calculate ki kitna compensation hona chahiye. Very good. Amazing. So I see all of you getting right. That's super awesome. All of you have become expert in this topic now. Causes of metabolic alkalosis include all of the following except. The question is except. So mineralocorticoid deficiency. That means your aldosterone is decreased. You know that aldosterone AL causes alkalosis. Aldosterone causes alkalosis. So when aldosterone is decreased, it will cause acidosis. So definitely this is your acidosis. Hypokalemia or K loss, right? That is alkalosis. Thiazide diuretics, it also causes hypokalemia. So this is alkalosis. Recurrent vomiting, acid going out. So this is alkalosis, right? So the answer is A, that is your mineralocorticoid deficiency, okay? Next one, which of the following conditions will not cause respiratory alkalosis? Why do I see mixed bag answers here, mixed answers here? The question is which of these will not cause respiratory alkalosis? Not cause, not cause respiratory alkalosis. So basically see, laryngeal obstruction. Why? Because it's your larynx getting obstructed. So CO2 not going out, increased CO2. Opposite the pH decreasing, that is going to cause your acidosis. Fever. The patient hyperventilates, right? Tachypnea out there. So CO2 wash out hoga. Anxiety, again, hyperventilation. Salicylate toxicity. Please remember it is salicylic acid. It causes metabolic acidosis. But respiratory, it causes alkalosis. Okay, it causes respiratory alkalosis because it stimulates the respiratory center. Okay, because it stimulates the respiratory center. All right. 
So remember, salicylate is metabolic acidosis, but respiratory alkalosis. All right. Do we have more questions? Okay. Let's try answering this one. Very good. Amazing. Super awesome. So you know these concepts now. All of the following are true about alkalosis except associated with hyperkalemia. Alkalosis is all K loss. So it is generally hypokalemia. So this is, uh, this is your incorrect. Associated with decreased ionic calcium. Yes, in your alkalosis, the calcium decreases. Right? Potassium decreases, calcium decreases. Primary hyperaldosteronism. Yes, it is your aldosterone, so causing your alkalosis. Renin secreting tumor. What happens to your renin levels? What happens to your aldosterone levels in renin secreting tumor? So increase your renin, then activates your entire RAS system. It increases your aldosterone. So basically this is increase the aldosterone. Increase aldosterone, any cause will cause your alkalosis. Okay, that will cause your alkalosis. Okay. Uh, oh, where is this? We were here. All are true for renal handling of acid and metabolic acidosis except. Thank you so much, Nizali and Varshal. I hope this confusing, difficult topic is now clear to everyone. What do you think is answer to this? Mm, Hardik says B and then I see mixed answer D, A, B and uh, uh, some confusion is what I see here. Think very, very logically in such questions. All are true for renal handling of acids in metabolic acidosis except. So basically in the body we have metabolic acidosis. So already the acids in the blood are increased. Okay, the acids in the blood are increased. So what do we want? We want this acids to go out into the urine. So the urine acid will increase because we want the blood acid to go out. Right? So the urinary acid density is increased. This is correct. Hydrogen ion secretion is increased because hydrogen is acid. Hydrogen goes out into the urine. So yes, the secretion is increased. Bicarbonate reabsorption. Remember the first table I had shown you, the compensation, hydrogen excretion, bicarbonate reabsorption, they both go in the same direction. So basically, if you see, these two are contradictory options. One of them is correct, one is wrong. Hydrogen ion secretion is increased. Bicarbonate reabsorption should also increase. Why? Because bicarbonate is an alkali. So to neutralize the acid, we need to increase the reabsorption. Come back in the body, right? So this is your incorrect statement. Urinary ammonia is increased. Why? Because the acid which is going into the urine, the hydrogen, that combines with ammonia in the urine to basically form your ammonium so that it does not get reabsorbed again. What happens to your urine phosphate? Next time, the question is on urine phosphate. What happens to urine phosphate? The urine phosphate also increases. Why? Because even that is your buffer for the excreted hydrogen. Right? So, remember phosphate increases, ammonia increases into the urine. Okay? Alright. Next one. Now, this is uh, what is your mixed acid-base disorder. The question that is generally asked. Do not get trapped in such questions. When they tell you that the pH is 7.4, do not think that the patient does not have anything. This is just a trap laid by the examiner. So this is not your no acid base abnormality. Generally in such questions where the pH 7.4 normal is given, along with that you will be given your sodium chloride and bicarbonate values. Why? Because they want you to calculate the anion gap. How much is the anion gap? Sodium, 145. 
minus chloride that is 100 plus bicarbonate that is 23. So the anion gap is 22. Increased? Yes, it is increased. Right? 8 to 12 is normal. So this is your high anion gap associated with metabolic acidosis. But then the pH is normal. That means there is a mixed acid-base disorder. So this is your high anion gap metabolic acidosis along with alkalosis. That is what is compensating the pH. Okay, that is what is compensating the pH. So such kind of questions, very, very, you know, they used to be frequently asked in AIMS exam. pH normal, they get. Saat mein aapko ye anion gap wale values de. Okay? So it's a mixed acid base. Acidosis with alkalosis, both would be there. Okay, acidosis with alkalosis, both would be there. All right, now coming back to your uh, compensation wala values. Some of you had asked for compensation. Let me see. Okay, so a reminder for the UNF 299 subscription one month. We are going to discuss a lot more mnemonics and tricks in these last days on the plus platform. All right. Kaha hai compensation? All right, this is your compensation value, okay? So how much should be the compensation in your acid base, in your acid base disorders? Metabolic acidosis, alkalosis, respiratory acidosis. Remember your respiratory acid base disorder that acute or chronic, right? Not the metabolic one because in metabolic, the respiratory compensation is early. So there's no acute and chronic, okay? So for your metabolic acidosis, where the bicarbonate decreases. For every one decrease in bicarbonate, what should happen to PCO2 decrease or increase? The PCO2 also should decrease, right? They both go in the same direction. The PCO2 should decrease. How much decrease? It's your 1.3. For 1, it is 1.3. For 10, it is 13, right? So, you can remember that for 1, it is 1.3. Okay, for every 1 decrease, PCO2 is 1.3. In metabolic alkalosis, for every 1 increase, PCO2 increases 0 0.6. Okay, 0 0.6. So, remember 13 and 6, that is Tera and Che. So, basically, yaad rakna, ki ye jo ke metabolic wale disorders hai, it is your 13 and uska half, that is 6. Or sometimes it's your 14 and 6 also. Respiratory acidosis, let me show you the values. It is 1, 4, 2 and 4. So basically in your acute, it is 1, 4 and it is 2 and 4 for every 10 decrease in PCO2. Now you know that respiratory acidosis is increase in PCO2. The compensation is your increase in bicarbonate. So just remember the values. It is 1, 4, 2, 4. Acute acidosis, chronic acidosis. Acute alkalosis, chronic alkalosis. That is your 1424. So remember the values like 13 and 6. This is for 10 change in bicarbonate. Okay, we are talking about 10 change, not the 1 change. Okay, not the 1 change. So 13, 6, 1, 4, 2, 4. Keep saying that and you'll remember the table. Metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, acute respiratory acidosis, chronic, acute respiratory alkalosis, and chronic. Okay, so 36. 1, 4, 2, 4. Okay, 13, 6, 1, 4 and 2, 4. These are the values that we should be knowing. So basically, what kind of question do we have here? So suppose if I tell you that there is a patient with metabolic acidosis. There's a patient with metabolic acidosis. Bicarbonate has basically become 14. Okay, bicarbonate is 14. How much should be the PCO2 according to the values that we read? For full compensation, how much should be the PCO2? So the bicarbonate has decreased by 10, 24 minus 14. That is yet 10 se kam ho gaya. So PCO2 ki value kitani honi chahiye to call it a fully compensated? PCO2 ki value kitani honi chahiye to call it fully compensated? What will be the answer to this? So, Venkat Nikhil, that's the other way of calculating your winter's formula jo hai. Worship, 53. Bicarbonate, agar 
कम हुआ है एसिडोसिस में PCO2 will decrease or PCO2 will increase. We are talking about compensation. Please don't do this mistake at the end, right? Metabolic acidosis, pH decreasing, bicarbonate decreasing, PCO2 will decrease. 40 minus karna padega, PCO2 kam hoga. 40 minus the bicarbonate has decreased by 10. For every 10 decrease, metabolic acidosis, it is 13. Right, it is 13 degrees. So 40 minus 13, that is basically it would be your 27. Right, yes, Avinata, very good. That's gonna be your 27 version. 27 is gonna be the correct answer. But you have plus minus wala, basically the formula, your winter's formula 1.5 into bicarbonate plus 8 plus minus 2. This is your another uh, formula which is there. You can calculate it either ways. Okay. So, this is your formula for compensation. Otherwise, the rest is the same. Alkalosis, ye hai che value, ye hai 1, 4, 2, 4. Okay, for every 10 change, for every 10 change. All right. Okay, so that completes your acid base disorders for discussion. I hope now everybody is clear on how to solve such questions, whether it's acidosis, alkalosis, how to make a diagnosis. All the cheat codes that are there, I basically shared with you in this topic. Please try solving the MCQs, right? So that you get more confidence in this topic. You can solve it from the question bank that we have on our Run Academy platform as well or any other platform that you are using, okay? All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you at uh, 5 p.m. basically, right? At 5 p.m. where uh, you have another mnemonic crash course at 5 at 10. That's for the plus subscribers. But now plus subscription is available to everyone. Because it is just at the cost of $2.99 for one month. Please do not miss out on this one. You have only a few days to avail this offer. And do not forget the code Dr. Nikita for availing this offer. Alright. See you at 5. Thank you so much everyone. Goodbye. Take care. And keep studying. Keep revising. And keep doing. Thank you.